my principal, Professor Yusuf Ali, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, is the founder and the principal uh, partner of these uh, chambers. I am the head of chambers. I relate more with my colleagues. Galibu Chambers, congratulations to you. Hey, Galibu Chambers, congratulations to you. Galibu family, congratulations to you. Hey, Galibu Chambers, congratulations to you. Professor Yusuf, congratulations to you. Hey, Ola Olu Ali, congratulations to you. Hey, Galibu Jimbasi, congratulations to you. I named him Malamali because at that time he was carrying one small beard. I was carrying beard then. But let me say that our coming together is for tweeters, it's divine in one way or the other. I didn't know him from anywhere. Through house his university education, his law school education, never knew him. But he came to Quara State as a youth copper. And so one of my old friends, um, Wale Afolabi, came to say, oh, I have a friend who is looking for a place where he can learn, where he can work. And I asked him, is he coming for money or is he looking for money? Oh, he said, no, sir, no, sir. He's, not, he's just coming for learning. I said, okay, bring him. He wanted to be, but somehow he had gone to um, Chief Lauren Nishola. He was not an SN, but now SN. P A O Long Nishola. So when he brought Malam Yusuf Ali in the um, one afternoon, uh, you know, I was very impatient then. So I said, Is that him? He says, Yes. What's your name? He said, I'm Ali. He went to Ife. He said, That one warned me that he went to the great Ife. You know, there are two universities in the world, Ife and others. So I said, great if I said, great if I said, ah, you are, you are the one I'm looking for. From that moment, we bonded. You know, I found out that he was a workaholic like me. He was somebody who was never willing to go, home, to go and sleep or do whatever. And God in his masses joined us together. So when I want to call him, I would not remember uh, Yusuf Ali said, Malam, Malam, what's that your name? Malam, come. That's how the name Malam, Malam started. After qualification, I was with uh, Aswaju Awumolo, I said. Of course, at that time, it was Mr. Um, and then after 11 years, it was when this idea came on that uh, maybe it was time to move. But let me give every facet of the initiation to Almighty Allah himself. It happened because that was the way Allah once wanted the thing to happen. Um, it was not as if I sat down somewhere at some point and then started feeling, oh, after X number of years, I was going to move here, I was going to do this. Uh, but the firm decision that Gali Chambers will come on board started actually in December 1993. Um, inspirational. Inspirational, spontaneous. That's exactly what happened. So when the idea came, the first person I told was my late wife, which was natural. 
Um, and our own concern was, I hope that she, was, she was asking me whether there were problems. I said, there were no problems. I think Allah just wanted me to take this leap of faith. So and I said, just continue to pray that uh, Allah should make it the right decision. And then thereafter came my friends. Waki um, Wabikerim, Isakulu Ede, Jami Ekuba, Ali Badmos. About the same time, I told all of them that this was what Allah has directed me to do, that I was going to leave Aumalu and go and set up a practice of my own. Of course, there were a lot of pushbacks and back and forth between us as friends. Um, they also, like my wife, they also wanted to know if there was any problem, and I said there was no problem. So I think it was just a decision that God said I should take. Professor Yusuf Olaolu Ali, Professor of Practice, uh, SAN, is a distinguished Nigerian, He's a forthright person, a professional to the core, very generous, very firm, and uh, he is somebody that is, uh, has contributed significantly to the development of law. And uh, I know him to be a person that uh, takes no nonsense. His standard is very high. When you decided to leave uh, where he was working, the chamber of now chief uh, Aumolo, in 1994, he, a number of us, three of us, Yusuf um, Ali Badmos, uh, Jami Ekumba, myself, he spoke with us, he shared his vision with us, but we were very skeptical. We, we felt he needed some time to pray about it and uh, have some spiritual consultation in terms of praying for God to guide us. But it was determined and it said it clearly that, look, all he required of us was to pray for the success of his vision. Later events showed that he took the right decision by starting Dali Chambers at the time that he did. Uh, when he was with Chiva Omono, uh, he was a workaholic. I don't think there was ever a time that he didn't go to work. I can remember that he took a leave. And I cannot remember that there was any time he was not in his office at Chiva Umalo's uh, chamber later than 8 o'clock. And I also cannot remember that he closed at work before 9 p.m. So the uh, prospects were clear that he would do better in his own chambers. I then made up my mind that I won't take any step in the actualization of the dream until I told my boss, uh, which was something I did, I think, in February or so of 1984. It was after I informed him that I now started to think of, okay, where will I want to set up an office? Where will the office be? What name should we give to the office? Et cetera, et cetera. He was one of the brightest boys around in Ilori. Even seniors were afraid of him. You know why? We researched our cases very well. We may be in the office at the 10 p.m., 11 p.m., if we need to do that. And it was never, I'm hurrying home, no. He had no vocation that engages him outside law. You know? So I'm not surprised today he's a professor of law. I'm not surprised. You know, like me, we don't know how to charge fees. I don't know how to charge fees. 
All is, I want to work. So is Malam Ali. He, at all times, he's concerned with how to succeed, how to work, to succeed, not how much money he got from the brief. So, but you will find that in all our cases, we research so well and so deep. You know, I had a slang for them. When they bring their problems, I said, yeah, this is very good. But you can dig deeper. Go back and dig deeper. And then he thank that only that time we don't have a law pavilion and national glue and general law report series, which are now online. Mm -mm. We have to pour through the books. And it was never in a hurry. I say it was dispendable because on no, for no, at, at no time, at no time did you quarrel about anything. Had our books of work of money. We never quarrel about that. Throughout. When I went to be Attorney General in Oshun, he was holding home, holding forth. He did all the cases well. He treated the, all the clients very well. He behaved very well to the bar and the bench. He held forth and he was accountable. I was very, very, very close to uh, Chief Awumolo the year he joined the chambers at Iloni, I, I was uh, based at Ibadan. But I would have cases in Iloni, then I would come to do these cases. And of course, each time I came down to Iloni, I would have to call on the chambers of uh, Ashiwaju Awumolo. Uh, so I just got in, I think it was in 1983 or so, and I saw this uh, handsome looking young man and I said, uh, that's a woman. And who is this? He said, oh, that's uh, my junior. Then as he said, customary with me to test the young ones, I engaged with uh, Yusuf Ali. I was, you see, extremely surprised at his level of learning, even when he was just about one, two years at the bar. You see, it struck me that day with a specific gravity of uncommon intellectuality. He had this grasp of the law at that very early age, and I was wondering where he got it. You see, he started very well very, very well, and it was that very first contact with him that made me take interest in him and in his growth. You see, he had uh, embarked on the first lane, and he held on to it right from then. He has uh, remained on that first lane of course, I came into the chambers that day, I won those chambers. Well, as a senior to him at the bar, but what you and I would not know at that time was that he and me were destined to become senior advocates of Nigeria the same day. The same day, of course, I was extremely happy you see, at his development. So what I can say very vividly about him is that he stands out there as a role model to the young ones. There's nothing that is as good in a human being than for him to be accountable. So when I was to apply for the SCN, I went out to when they appointed me as AG, I didn't like it. I said it's going to disturb me from my ambition in life from day one is to be a senior advocate. 7th of July, 1978. I saw Ruth Williams on the podium and I said, I want to be like this man. That SAN, I must get it. At a point in time, it, it was becoming too emotional and erratic for me. And I say, I do a man. If I get my SAN today and I die tomorrow, they will say there was a man called Adebu Egasolo on a woman law. S-A-N, it will be on the record. But God spared my life. 
1992, I became an SA. 1993, in 1992, I became an SA, and I'm still alive. 32 or 30 something years. Is that not so? Yes, yes. So what am I looking for? My ambition is life is to live, contribute my quota, and move on. It will be said, oh, there was a good man here. They call his name. Eh, what's that his name again? Adebuega, woman. Ah, yeah. So Yusuf came. He was loyal. He was faithful. He was accountable. He was dependable. He is a person that uh, is passionate about whatever he does. I think Yusuf Olaolu Ali is not just an expert, it's not just a practitioner in the field of law. It's somebody who, uh, who is an embodiment of excellence, not only in law, but in the practice, in, in, in the uh, development of humanity. He's an all-round person in terms of contribution to development. <laughs> Allah is great. Uh, it was easy because it was easy to take the decision, but actualization was the issue. Uh, the first starting point was that after I identified and located a premises for the office, I was asked to pay 12,000 naira per annum for the space, but I needed to pay for two years. To tell you how easy Allah made it, I didn't have 24,000 uh, pence or kobo. So the first two years rent I paid, I went to borrow. That tells you clearly how tough it was. Having paid the rent, how do you equip the place at least to look a bit um, normal? Before then, I had some junior friends who are also lawyers who challenged me that, ah, sir, you can't just set up an office, a room and parlor stuff. That would not encourage the rest of us. You must do something better than that. So I got a three-bedroom um, apartment. You know, the bigger the space, the more challenging to equip. But alhamdulillah, before we started on the 1st of June, we had basic things in place. Basic, very basic. Chairs and tables for secretary, for me. Uh, we try to uh, equip an office for junior colleagues if they come, but no junior came immediately. Uh, so when we started on the 1st of June, there were only three of us. My first secretary, my clerk and myself. Of course, of course, I, have, I had a driver at that time too. So those were the people that started Gallip Chambers on the 1st of June, 1994. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Because it's a very good experience meeting a personality like Yusuf Ali, S.A. Hen, and having somebody like him in your life. As a mentor, as a mentor, as a father, as a brother, and as somebody that gave you direction in your life. Because the time we met, that I was appointed as a clerk, there is no direction. It's made, it's a person that encourage, not only encourage, he advise and let you know what you actually, what is the basic of life, what you need to do to better your, to better your lot. And alhamdulillah, I'm here, I am today. By the special grace of God, we started Gary Chamber together about 30 years ago. Actually, I'm the first staff of Gary Chamber before anybody, before any lawyers. Because me and Professor Yusuf Ali, we have been together since 1992. And then I used to be his driver up to today. And by, by the special grace of God, I'm now a king. My village. It was not easy. I had to go and I told a friend 
is still alive, engineer Kola Ibrahim, that look, I needed money to pay rent. On that, that time, himself said he was low in cash, but he went somewhere to get the money for me. But alhamdulillah, we paid back the money within the time we said we wanted to. I, you know, in the, in, at that time, there was still uh, this, um, typewriters were still in existence, Olympia and things. But I made up my mind, it was the time when electronic typewriter was just coming on, that we wanted an electronic typewriter. So I got uh, a chap who is a, he's an old man, but he's in his own right now. He's a Ghanaian, but he has become a Nigerian, actually. Alfred Kerr is his name. And I said, Alfred, I needed the, the typewriter. So he was the, then the main supplier for Brothers typewriter type of electronic typewriters. We got one from him. Of course, we couldn't pay once. We had to pay over time. So those are the way we gathered things together. The guy, the man who was selling books, law books, I approached him, Solomon, and I said, you should supply us some books, which he did, which we were paying uh, over time. So that was how we joined the different leg, different head. The thing became a human being as it were. Allahu, Allah, Allahu, Allah, Allah. Chambers, Galib Chambers, was her contribution. When the two of us sat down, I said, look, okay, since I've uh, made up my mind that we are going to set up a Chambers, what name will you suggest? So the name Galib was from her, which means victory or victorious. So that is number one. Number two, my wife was a prayer warrior. Any issue that affected me or the children or the family, you can go to sleep. She will not only pray on season, she will fast almost uh, for as long as you can imagine. So uh, she was a very good encourager. She, she had the spirit of never say never, never say die. She believed that with God, everything is possible. And I, so that we complement each other in that area. So that assisted me a lot. And then this was a woman who would never make material demands on you for herself. She never did for the 20 years we were married before she passed. So that gave me a lot of, uh, so I wasn't under pressure economically from her. She would accept whatever I was able to offer, even for housekeeping and things. So she gave me rest of mind to be able to settle down and pursue what I thought would be the goals of her practice. Alhamdulillah. She's not here, but I know that what you've done with it and how Allah has blessed you with it, it has grown so far and then she would, it would be something if she were here, she would be very proud of you. Um, I'm very proud of you for the hard work. I'm very proud of you for the for your humility and consist consistency. I am proud of you for being a great, great role model for myself, my siblings, and immediate and extended siblings. We develop a relationship of a brother to a brother, younger brother to a senior brother, and we related, you know, and I recall also when we went to Ibadan to go and take that girl that God took away. They said, Woman law, but I'm already we told you re along the bar told you but she fell. So why do we love the pay? Who go on way so she alone from foul sats? Go sick on to Jashan. Go sick on to your wallet no. You see, the Christians, we believe that when God gave us children that are not trouble to us, to the society, they are great blessings. So I regard them as blessings to, to us. The 
the first person to join as a junior associate um, is Mr. Kainde Kola Oli Eleja, by the grace of God, a senior advocate of Nigeria today. He joined in October 1994. Remember, we started 1st of June. The story of how he joined is a long story, so, but one thing that is quite clear was that I took him on because of his diligence and seriousness, even as a young man then, that he was. So he joined me straight from NYC. He finished his NYC in Benue. So the first place he ever worked as a lawyer was in Gallup Chambers. Then following closely in his full step was Mr. Sikiru, Uthman Sholagberu. Incidentally, the two of them were classmates. They were call mates. He joined in November 1984. Mr. Sholagberu eventually became the chairman of Illinois West local government some years after he had been with the chambers. So those were the first two junior colleagues I had. I was opportune to be the first full-fledged lawyer to join Gallup Chambers when it was founded. I recall that it was founded on the 1st of June 1994, and I joined the office in October 1994, fresh from the National Youth Service Corps. At the relevant time, the office was uh, situated on the Brian Tyrell Road, I think number 98, Brian Tyrell Road, Delorey. Precisely, it was a three bedroom uh, apartment in a building consisting of five uh, flats of three bedroom and uh, two shops uh, uh, at the ground floor. I would say that it was a very humble beginning. And uh, as at the time I joined, there was uh, a secretary on ground, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Saida Abubakar, as she then was. There was a uh, Baba Kibi Larry Wadu Suleiman as the clerk of the office. There was a uh, Richard Ogbom, who was uh, the sec who was a driver. I think uh, that was uh, the situation when I joined. I may say that it was a very modest beginning at the relevant time. And as soon as I joined, I realized that uh, it was not a, a usual office. Usual in the sense that uh, things were being done exceptionally on the positive note. For instance, when I reported for work. The very day I reported was there, I was advised to stay back. And I said, no, that would be too early. As a matter of fact, I pleaded for a bit of time to join, but uh, your guy in his usual way rebuffed that and insisted that I should join the following day. So I joined the following day. Uh, it was uh, on that day that I joined that uh, I could see work started for me in earnest. Because that same day, we had to travel to Adwekiti, then in the Ondo stage, for some professional engagements. And all through the way from Ilori, uh, we slept at uh, 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 Indonesia. And all through, it was a uh, law and law and law, discussion of law, the citing of authorities. And uh, something told me that, yes, this was the right place to be. To the glory of God, I have no regret. It was action all through the 17 years that I stayed there. Moshu Dalabelewe was um, incidental classmate to KK and others. He was to work with us, but he went to serve in Kaduna and then stayed over. So up to now, he's seen as a member of the office. His late father was my elder friend and we relate like family. Of course, I also know everything concerning him, concerning how he got married, his children, and his practice in Kaduna. So the good thing about it is that professionally, we all still link together. Most times when we have big cases in the office, they all get involved one way or the other. Either you get involved in this case or you get in that other case. So like the last presidential petition 
Some of them were brought into the, uh, into the team to work for the president. And that's the way we do. When, when I have cases in Mediguri, in uh, Cross Rivers, in Benue, I tap on some of the past members of the office to be part of the team. In terms of integrity, even as at the time I joined, the kind of privileges he was enjoying from court, based on his uh, unshaking integrity, was unimaginable. I recall that, uh, and of course, because of hard work and positive reputation generally, I recall the, the Court of Appeal, Cardinal Division, used to hear appeals from Quara State. And uh, the practice in the courts was that uh, in, following, in uh, calling cases in court, the court will follow what we call seniores priores, that is to say the order of seniority. Senior advocates, in the absence of senior advocates, other lawyers in terms of seniority. But even way back then in Kaduna, the Court of Appeal, and of course several other courts, used to give him that privilege. Oh, Mr. Lee, which one is your matter? My matter is number 15. Oh, we know that uh, you have to go back to Ilori today. Please call your case out of turn. I recall that occasion when uh, uh, somebody was not a senior advocate, but a, a, a much uh, older lawyer, the bar got up to say, my lord, I'm here. I should take precedence over him. Uh, but but I'm, I'm also not even from jurisdiction here. So you should call my case before him. And they said, well, <laughs> gentlemen, we know what we are doing. And it's a matter of privilege. And that is the way we have chosen to uh, exercise our privilege. Uh, so all through, it's been uh, a, a chambers from which much was learnt, and much could be learnt. It's an uh, all run thing. You learn hard work, you learn integrity, you learn respect, you learn humility, you learn uh, even to be close to God. Because I recall uh, soon after I came. We were engaged in the discussion, and uh, I recall a guy asked me, KK, you know there are two ways in this profession. One is, you have to either be close or closer to your God if you are close to him, in terms of devotion. You have to be up and doing uh, so that uh, things could go well for you, because the other option is that some people belong to some other uh, societies. And he said, well, the choice is, I said, well, the choice I will make is this. He said, well, you will have a surprise if I had mentioned that other option. So it's somebody who wants to encourage people to be religious. And this is not even confined to those who are Muslims. As a Christian too, we encourage you to practice your faith. That is why at any point you get to the office, you will see Muslims, you will see Christians. Uh, doing their things uh, freely without any encumbrance uh, of any sort from the office. For Lagos, that's the commercial capital of Nigeria. It doesn't matter how you move the political capital. It's quite necessary you must be in Lagos because all the big companies that patronize lawyers, oil companies, multinationals, they, are, they were all in Lagos. So it was natural that you must drift towards Lagos. And of course, I have quite a number of people in Lagos. Chief among them, Laji uh, Waikyo Abdukarim, who encouraged me at all times because he's a Lagos man, as it were. Even people like uh, the interviewer, uh, Ibrahim, Alaji Ibrahim Abdul Majid. So a lot of other brothers like that were in Lagos. So it was an attraction. In fact, to, to some of them, including the interviewer, they actually wanted me to come up to Lagos and settle down in Lagos. But Lagos life is too fretful and too stressful for me. Um, I'm a local person. Then Abuja came naturally because Abuja is the capital of Nigeria. So in 2000, we had to have physical presence in Abuja as well. And of course, because we've been very lucky, um, we have patronage from individuals, from corporations, from companies, from government, 
So it was natural that um, we have to fan out. But it only remains our headquarters, our head office. To the glory of God, today, Galif Chambers has metamorphosed into what I will call a law center. Because from an humble beginning of just the principal and myself as a professional staffer, uh, to uh, the current uh, Galif Bay houses, where research in relation to law takes place now, and uh, where you have uh, about 30 or so lawyers as professional members of staff with a legion of other support staff, I think is uh, a monumental transformation. And we give God Almighty the glory. Galibu family, congratulations to you. Galibu chambers, congratulations to you. Now, I can tell you confidently that we have been very lucky. Our office, as I'm talking to you, we have what we call the Galib family. Both past and present members of the office, we all still relate like a family. And when I say family, I mean a family. Um, there is hardly anyone who had passed through the office or is still there that I don't have some level of close intimacy with their families. They are real families, not their own immediate family, even their own uh, uh, extended families. So I have that kind of relationship with virtually everybody. Either you are lawyers or you are non-lawyers. If I have people who got, in fact, most of them got married when they got to the office, all those who had gone. They got married, KK Rejaise and got married while he was with me. Sholak Beru did it was also while he was with me. Um, uh, Abdullah Soliu, not in order of seniority, I'm just mentioning. Uh, Professor M.T. Adikilekun, while he was with me. Professor Aziza Amolo Yadibayo, while she was with me. Um, Ibrahim Atu Farati, while he was with me. Tafa Ahmed, they all got married while they were with, in the office. And of course, all those who are there now, all of them, from the, from the most senior secretary who joined our firm in 1988, up to Afsa Tadebayo, they all got married while in the office. And uh, because I love small children and I want to promote uh, the inclusiveness, we have a crutch in the learning office. We are all those who work in the office who are women, bring their children in the morning when they report for duty. I joined Gali Chamber in 1998, 1st June. Well, I'm happy that I joined the Chamber. I don't even know I'll be like this. Alhamdulillah. Chamber is fine. I learned a lot of lessons here, especially the prayer. The, my boss is not a boss for me. Is a father because I know I can't even say I can't even say any most of the things that the man have done for me. I can't I can't say anything. But I thank God and I pray for him. The Allah's one at Allah will still more bless him, give him long life and prosperity. The chamber is fine. We don't even call it Gallup Chamber, we call it Gallup family. Uh, being at Gallup Chambers, we Aside from the professional opportunities, you are also exposed to people of great character, starting from the principal partner, Professor Yusuf Ariesien. He is a man that is known for discipline, for punctuality, for being ethically and morally upright. So Gallup Chambers is well known for all those principles. And uh, more importantly, Gallic Chambers is beyond a professional place. It is like a family where everybody relates in a very cordial way with each other. We take ourselves like family. We go beyond the um, professional sphere to celebrate with each other when we have something to celebrate. I, I, let me just say that professionally, I have excitement about all cases. I don't underrate any matter. Every case is big as far as I'm concerned. Once it comes to our office, 
But the one that makes all the biggest of all the, 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 the noises virtually is the, are the political cases. Uh, we've had that. We have, we've been very lucky. We've found quite a number of cases for a lot of past governors, present governors, former presidents. Former presidents, I was in the team of um, Letia Radua when his election was challenged in 2007. Uh, yeah. And then in, I was in the team of uh, former President Buhari when his election was challenged. And I was also in the team of uh, the current president. And I've been counsel to the, the, now the vice president of Nigeria when he was governor in Bruno State. I was uh, counsel to uh, Alimudu Sharif, even his own uh, predecessor, the old man in Medugula, I was his, his counsel. The president minister for police affairs, Alaj Gedam, when he was governor in Yobe, his, um, the former governor, Mama Nali, late in Yobe, I was his counsel. The present governor of Gombe, I was his counsel. Dr. Alex Oti, I had worked for him before when he was challenging to become governor in Nabia. Uh, Abel Ansans against the DMAC. You know, uh, that case tells me clearly that integrity pays. When you have integrity, when people believe you, are, you have integrity, you are honest. Late Bishop Abiola was the owner of 7-Up Bottling Company. Of course, as is usual with such big organizations, he took, so the company took money from FCMB. It wasn't Monument there, it was Four City Merchant Bank, it was then known. Unfortunately, he couldn't liquidate the money. So FCMB now appointed receiver manager which means they were taking over the company. So it became litigious, a lot of cases, left, right, and center. So I think started about 1988 or so. I was, of course, at that time, I was with Chifao Molo. So our office was briefed by FCMB, so we were representing them. So many cases came out of that. But the point about uh, Abel and Sansan, Dimak, was that immediately I left Omolo and Co. in 1984. Bishop Abela, against whom I've been working all these years, sought me out. And he said, young man, I have this case on appeal. Can you do it for me? I said, why not? So, in fact, I think that was the first appellate matter I took in Gallup Chambers. So he briefed us, he paid us well, we went and God gave us victory. And thereafter, I became quite close to his family because his son was like a junior brother to me. So we got, so that's the way. If the man didn't know, didn't believe that I have integrity, which he told me himself, of course, he wouldn't even come because I had been working against him for, considering for more than uh, uh, six, seven years before he came to brief me. I can say proudly today that Ali is a success in this uh, profession. It doesn't come by fluke. You have to work for it. He has worked assiduously, relentlessly, you see, for success. He loves the law, and the law has made him, you see, a success today. To the glory of God, I, because I believe that uh, we all owe societies, our society, a lot of debt. It's where when God has assisted you to become successful in whatever you are doing. Uh, we do quite a number of pro bono matters. Even before it became the rule to become SCN, now you must show evidence of pro But I didn't need to wait for that. I knew that Allah has been very kind to me, and I also knew and I know now that I must give back to the society. So actually, I can tell you that as many as 60% of what we do in the office, they are pro bono. But I don't feel anything about because God has been very kind. Whatever we do free, God will provide, look for something to give us to do that will bring uh, some money. So uh, we try to help the helpless, the cheated, the down children uh, in various ways. And because I had this mantra, I begged Allah that since I started practice, even while I was with uh, Chiba Molo, 
that the issue of money will never make me to drop a case. Once I accept your brief, if you don't pay, because I believe that if you don't pay here, you pay on the day of judgment anyway. So, issue of money had never caused any problem between a client and I, that I won't pursue the case. I will do your matter to the end. He's an advocate of justice. I know that there were instances when he was not satisfied with judgments of lower courts and he felt uh, justice had not been done. And on his own volition, pursued the course of justice till justice was done. He is that kind of a person. And I believe that it is working for justice that way that has promoted the chambers because Allah has a way of rewarding good deeds. Promoting justice is good deed. And he has done a lot of that. And that is why the chambers has kept rising. And uh, you can see so many things he had done. When I was the pro chancellor of uh, Fountain University, I could remember that he came there and uh, he built a very uh, a luxury uh, hostel which he donated to us. Even when I was vice chancellor of the University of Illinois, he donated the, uh, in his uh, late wife's uh, name, he donated hostel, which we call poor man's uh, hostel because it was completely free for those who indigent students. There are so many things he had done. Uh, I pray that God will continue to guide him. He's uh, a serious person. He's, uh, whatever he wants to do, he does with passion. Uh, we are very proud of Yusuf Olaulu Ali. Ah, well, you know, when you have to work with a lot of people, <laughs> we, we are all not talented the same way. We are not all committed the same way. Our vision is not the same. Our focus is not the same. One general problem about legal practice today, which does not affect us alone, is the predilection of many of our younger colleagues to think that money is the beginning and end of everything. It's, and I'm sure it affects other professions as well. Now, when we were just three lawyers in the office, and we had patronage too, we hardly, I couldn't remember the time we ever had to take any step in court out of time allocated by the rules. But now, as many as we are, you now have challenges of even how to keep track with what people are doing. So, so sometimes things that we are not used to in terms of asking for time, for extension of time to take legal steps, that now comes in into the system. You know, so the, so the challenge, and I've told you we are not all talented, we are not all gifted the same way, but the inability of many people wanting to take on the challenge and wanting to improve themselves is also part of the problem. Because people are now focused more on what can I get in terms of Naira and Kobo, rather in terms of, okay, let me invest my talent. I always tell people, if you are lucky and you have done your own path in terms of being dedicated to what you are doing, once you acquire a good reputation, money will come. But many of them are not ready to wait. They want soup that is already made. Uh, they, they are not even ready to allow it to cool down properly after removing it from the pot. So I think that's a challenge that all professions are actually facing, not only lawyers. So we have that kind of challenge. Financially, it was not uh, an Eldorado at the relevant time. There were times that things were challenging. I recall an occasion. There was a time we were supposed to go for NBA conference somewhere, I think in Jos or so. And uh, Mala Yusuf Ali has as a, a very selfless, self, uh, selfless leader that he was, uh, kept it away from me that he uh, was not going to be uh, attending the conference because of uh, economic reasons. But the good thing about it is that uh, he ensured that uh, those of us who were lawyers in the office were sponsored fully by the office. 
paid for our accommodation, paid for our transportation, registered us for the conference. But he stayed back. He said, no, that he has some commitment. It was not after we had returned from the conference and I was really uh, comparing notes with him, what happened and the rest of it, that he told me that, KK, you know, I didn't attend that conference because if I were to go, it would affect the rest of us, the rest of you guys. And that it was better for me to stay back. You guys should go. There will always be uh, uh, more conferences. So when people now see him, and they feel, oh, yes, it's a bed of roses. Yes, and I'm delighted. Thank God for the progress made. But it was not like that initially. So these are some of uh, the challenges that uh, we had. I tried to be a mentor for a lot of people. Not necessarily lawyers alone. Um, uh, that's what I've tried to do. Even try to mentor people who are younger to, to us in the MSS in those days. Uh, so much so that <clears throat> when some of them got married, after we got married, we encouraged them to come and spend some time in our house, to come and do honeymoon in our house when my wife was still there, uh, just to let them see the way we lived as a family. So now, going forward, we just try to encourage a lot of these our younger colleagues, uh, let them know, but we encourage them not only by word of mouth, at least for those who work in my own immediate vicinity, you try to encourage them by ensuring that um, when they have financial challenges and things, even before then, you try to ensure. For example, we have the policy of uh, giving bonuses in the office. When we have good matters that brings some extra money, you try to reward people. But this bonus is not tied to seniority. It's tied to our own assessment of your contribution in the office. We try to do that. And there is no personal economic issue that affects anybody that will not intervene, once we know. Oh, my engine get knocked. I was driving, my engine get knocked. We try to assist in our own way. For many of the, my colleagues, they have masters. And usually once it is an approved you want to go for masters, you, uh, you approach the office, we have a policy, we'll pay your tuition. Number two, local conferences that we can identify. We encourage our colleagues to attend. Number three, we ensure that our library is stocked with the latest publication, both legal and non-legal, so that you can approach, go to the library, either here or Ilori, and you can self-develop yourself intellectually. So, and if we know you are doing something that has intellectual uh, connotation, and we, we, are, we are aware. And then only recently we just came back from uh, our annual retreat of three intensive days of lectures and things like that that we did. So these are the ways we try to encourage ourselves. Uh, to develop uh, professionally and personally. I did it within my whole level, my A level, I just, I acquire all that within the system. And by its encouragement, morally, financial support. You know, if God wants to assist you, you know early enough what are your strengths and your weaknesses and your talent. What I thought was a disadvantage at the beginning of my life turned out to be an advantage. And what do I mean? I entered secondary school, I was a mature student. I was well over 18 when I entered class one. Because I finished primary school, went to a modern school for three years, worked before I entered secondary school. All those times I thought they were disadvantages. In fact, when I entered university in 1978, I should have graduated. All those who left school with me had gone at that time. I thought it was a disadvantage, but God apparently was preparing me for something bigger. And how do I mean? By the time I entered secondary school, I was already determined in my mind what I wanted to do. Even entering secondary school, when most people when they were leaving secondary school would not even know what they wanted to do. So I was already matured enough. So by the time I left secondary school, my path was already clearly known to me. So. 
going to the university, leaving the university, two things, because I was lucky. I, I, I think people thought I, I was brilliant. Uh, when I left the university, I prayed to God for two things. Either that I would go back to go and teach, or I would practice. God chose for me. So I didn't go to teach. I came to practice. But from around 1996, 97, it's good when you are surrounded by people who have global vision. Uh, I give this credit to Professor Isiak the current registrar of JAMB. He encouraged me. We were living together in the same house. The two of us, were, the, our families were in the same house. There was, there was this building that was five bedroom up, five bedroom down. My family was downstairs there. He was, uh, his family was up. And at that time, he was a junior lecturer himself in the university. And uh, he kept on encouraging me because we knew ourselves way back uh, in, in the Muslim Student Society of Nigeria. So he felt that I had the talent to be able to write, to do things in law and things. So he kept on prompting me. And so I started writing academic papers, which I would send to journals, legal journals that got published. So, at the time, he now said, look, why don't you come and be a adjunct lecturer in our university, University of Elorin? So, in 1988, I became, formally became an adjunct lecturer in the Faculty of Law. But all along, I used to deliver papers on diverse topics at different fora. So, and of course, to the glory of God, as the years were rolling by, one got international recognition to come and deliver paper here, come and deliver paper there in Ghana, at international bar association conferences, at Nigerian bar association conferences. So one started to gather these experiences, but I continued to do the adjunct lecturer work in the university. So that level of encouragement. So when I started to put all these things together, I now said, oh, this thing is building. I never knew people were noticing, you know? So on and on and on and on and on. Um, then 2016, I decided to publish something in the form of a book, and then uh, authored the book, Anatomy of Corruption in Nigeria, Issues, Challenges, and Solutions, which was presented in May 2016 in Abuja here. So I kept on doing what I was doing. Then I decided to go further, then wrote two other books, simultaneously presented uh, in 2023. And then in 2023, I was just in my office in Elorin when the Dean of Law of Federal University of Yekiti, Professor Femi Abifarin, came with uh, a young woman, Dr. Adeola Kendi, who now is my head of the department. Professor Abifarin was somebody who was years before my junior in practice, and so on and so So, and I said, okay, fine. We, I will come and deliver it. We agreed on the date, and I went. The vice chancellor is somebody I knew through the former vice chancellor of Ocean State University. By the way, I, was, I used to be pro-chancellor and chairman of council in that university. Professor Labo Kubola, who was the vice chancellor at the relevant time in Junior Ocean, whom I was lucky to be the chairman that appointed him as vice chancellor, was a classmate to the current vice chancellor of uh, Federal University of Oyekiti. So the current vice chancellor in Oyekiti used to come to Union Ocean when we had events. So we just had some level of interaction. So that day when I got to Oye, I had to go to his office to go and um, greet him before the lecture started. And he said to me, Egmo, I have a surprise for you. And I was just wondering, was he going to give me money or something? <laughs> I was just laughing inwardly. That was Professor Sandy Fashina. So when we got to the place of the lecture, I delivered the lecture. It appeared people liked. He came with the total, the all his uh, management team and all the, so many other people. And they said, well, they, had, they made the decision that they were going to appoint me as a professor of practice in the university, and that, uh, so they now came with the letter and presented it to me. It came as a surprise because once I didn't go to full 
academics, and I opted for practice. It, it was a road that I thought was foreclosed to become a professor, since I was no more a full academic something. And by the way, uh, lest I forget, uh, King's College London appointed me as a research fellow about five years ago. So once in a while, I go to King's College in London to deliver lectures to their postgraduate students. In fact, I have one now that is outstanding that I have to go to the UK. So I go and interact with the PhD students to deliver some uh, talk. So that's the way the thing has uh, evolved. So this professor thing, I never planned for it. I never thought about it. It just came as one of uh, the favors of God. Well, some of the notable achievements of Malam um, uh, Ali SN have been recorded for posterity. For example, on the occasion of his uh, 20 years anniversary as a senior advocate of Nigeria, some of these things are documented in the work titled Two Decades of Forensic Advocacy at the Nigeria Bar. And of course, uh, part of his achievement is that uh, he had raised so many successful lawyers. Yours truly is one of them, who by the grace of God is a senior advocate of Nigeria now. About two years ago, Chief Rafi Ubalu Mezien was also confirmed with uh, the title of senior advocate of Nigeria. We also have high court judges and even professors who, stayed, who started as lawyers in that chambers. Aside uh, those of us, there are also so many successful lawyers. There is hardly any state in Nigeria that you get to today that will not find people who are related to Yusuf, Ko, Ali and Ko, who have benefited immensely from learning and the very good culture and tradition of Gali chambers. My conviction is that uh, with what had been done so far, Mwalam Yusuf Ali SN has edged his name in letters of gold for even generations that are coming. I feel fulfilled. I am fulfilled that if I die today, you'll be one of those who will say, oh yeah, 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 if the last day comes, if I, he, will be, he, will, he will bury me. I will not bury him. So when it is that day, one of those to go and leave me in one place in a bad job. You know, he asked me to will my wife. I have not decided to do that. <laughs> if I did to advise him, I would just ask him to continue to pray that God will continue to guide him. He's somebody that, um, there's some people see him as uh, very hard. I do not see him as that because if there is need for advice, is the one advising me at times because uh, I could be more rigid than Yusuf Olabuali. But uh, he's somebody that I think professionally, it is my view that uh, he needs to strategically expand the chambers. I want to see a, a chamber that is not just developing, not just expanding, but strategically expanding. I want to see cells, teams of different uh, specialization of law within its chambers. I want to, uh, he has written a lot. He has also contributed to law practice. I want to see a strategic recording, a strategic uh, uh, storage uh, of his contribution to legal uh, training. One has every reason to continue to thank Allah all the time and uh, to say that 30 years may look small, may look short, but it's quite long. And to that extent, one has no choice other than to be saying Alhamdulillah all the time. My message to my immediate environment is that um, we must all believe in the law. 
because the, to do otherwise, there will be chaos and anarchy. There's nobody who can stop that. He's the lawyer of the Emirates. Not only that, if anybody will sue or want to sue the Emirate or the Emir, really we will not even wait to be called. We will assume power to continue. Then the government came to the job. The government came to the job. The government came to the job. The government came to the the to the to the to the the to the the to the the Rather than to ask Almighty Allah to continue to bless you, one is one look at so follow back to our Koda or Kuma and Lower Koma and Asi. Colon come, then a colon or back to that. Could you must see? Could you come on? It is my order. Cook by one more, what that look at me. I have known Grand Chambers for as old as uh, the Chambers is, 30 years. Uh, it's a law firm that is well known and respected for diligence, expertise, and has produced a number of highly placed Nigerians in all spheres of uh, human endeavor, not minding the fact that it's a predominantly Law firm. He has produced senior advocates of Nigeria, vice chancellors, and I would say judges of various grades, and then other law teachers, commissioners, and all that. For the man himself who acts or controls Ghanish chambers, that is a Yusuf for Laudu He's a man that I respect so much. He's a very detailed and very dutiful. When it comes to integrity, it's rooted high. And that is number one thing that if every other thing fails, you have that one going for anybody who has endowed with that uh, uh, quality. So, and when it comes to legal practice, he has uh, you know, traversed almost every sphere of uh, legal practice from election petition land matters, administration of first state, uh, arbitration, contract, constitutional law, there are many. So the chambers has been a breeding ground for you know future leaders on the bank.